In due time, a little later this month, we will read the familiar Christmas story in the Gospel according to Luke. The beloved fundamental story usually read on Christmas Eve The story acted out in Christmas pageants around the world where we often throw in Matthew's epiphany story with a few wise ones bringing some gifts, following a traveling star, and accompanied by a few camels. When, according to the story, it seems Jesus would have been about two years old. These pageants often bring many fond memories to our minds, sometimes feelings of closeness, perhaps even a smile or two. We love this story. Just thinking about these words, especially at this time of year, brings to mind the images and smell of Christmas greenery surrounding us, candles glowing with peaceful light as the strains of silent night hang gently in the air. We internalize this warm glow, sharing love and good cheer a little more readily during this season. We tell the beloved Christmas story with awe and wonder, with a deep sense of peacefulness. Well, at least as long as we leave out the part about killing all the little children in the region two years old and younger. But we love the Christmas story, or at least many of us do. But do these stories actually change us in any way? Do we get the message the authors are trying to convey in their poetic narratives? Do these stories really make a difference in our lives, in your life? If we can set aside the warm glow for a moment, allowing ourselves to see how very differently each gospel writer tells the Jesus story, we at least have a chance of understanding the message the gospels have for us. The lectionary for this liturgical year, known as Year B, the liturgical year which began last week with the first Sunday of Advent, focuses on the gospel according to Mark for this year's stories of Jesus. Let me begin by reading to you again Mark's Christmas story, chapter 1, verse 1. Here begins the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's it. Not much of a Christmas story, not much on which to build a Christmas pageant, not poetic words easily eliciting the warm Christmas glow many are seeking this time of year. In fact, even the suggested lectionary readings drop the focus on Mark when Christmas Eve and Christmas Day come around, with most churches reverting back to the familiar Lucan account, and perhaps thereby missing an opportunity to gain deeper understanding of the significance of Jesus in our world. Now, neither Mark nor any of the four other gospels, or any of the other gospels, are eyewitness accounts of anything about Jesus, not his birth, not his life, not his death, though Mark, in fact, was written closest to the time of Jesus' birth, a mere 40 years after Jesus' death, which would be about 70 years after Jesus' birth, not quite an eyewitness account of Jesus. The author of Mark, the first of our four Gospels, tells the reader right up front who Jesus is. You know right from the start, from verse 1, the whole Gospel is about Jesus Christ, a special child of God. That's all this author believes that you need. Mark seems to think it unnecessary to include a miraculous birth story. The story doesn't seem to be of primary significance, and Mark's understanding of who Jesus is. Jesus arrives somehow. John sets the stage for Jesus' adult ministry, and Jesus' adulthood, the few years there are of it, are spent following God's call on his life, doing the sacred work given to him to do. For Mark, all that really matters is his own unique take on Jesus' life and work and death. Now, the Gospel according to John was the last of the Gospels to be written, at least of the Gospels familiar to us and included in our Bibles. John was written about 60 years after Jesus' death, which means about 90 years after Jesus' birth. Again, not exactly an eyewitness account of Jesus. John doesn't provide an account of Jesus' birth either. 
a, no Christmas story or miraculous birth. These seem of no importance to this author in the task of setting Jesus apart as important, as special, as someone particularly closely in tune with God. In John's account, what set Jesus apart is being the word, word that is life for humanity, the light, light that cannot be overcome by darkness, the word becoming flesh, staying a little while among us. In John's gospel, this word, this life, this light are set forth. Then John the baptizer prepares the way for adult Jesus to begin his sacred work that God has called him to do. Now, Matthew and Luke are written in between these two Gospels of Jesus' life. Both of them tell us the story of Jesus' birth, though in radically different ways, with very different details, including information that contradicts and conflicts with the other account. Now, this is going to sound like a seminary lecture, but it's going to be really short, okay? At a time when our Gospels were being written, stories about important leaders often contained miraculous accounts of their birth. There are many examples of these in, in, of this literary genre. A specific way of writing that was very common in the day in an attempt to demonstrate a person's special importance, sort of proving why they really are someone that deserves honor and really are someone that should be followed. Matthew and Luke adopted this common literary technique, trying to set Jesus apart, attempting to describe Jesus indescribable connection to the holy, a goal different in style from Mark and John, but with a similar objective of telling who Jesus is and trying to help us see why Jesus is important. Now, even though we don't have time to do this this morning, it would be valuable to look seriously at each gospel account, comparing and contrasting them in order to grasp the unique message of each author. For especially in the differences between them, we come to understand what the writer was saying, and we gain new insights into the divine and into the human. <clears throat> For now, though, what about the Christmas story? <clears throat> especially the Matthew and Luke stories, filling us with awe and wonder, or at least filling some of us with awe and wonder. But what if you really just can't believe these birth accounts of Jesus? They just don't make any sense to you. You can't possibly make them fit with your contemporary worldview. What about the many, and there are many, who have left the Christian church because they just can't believe this stuff? So they figure there's no room for them in the church. If they can't truly believe the details of these stories, they must not be able to be Christians. They must not really be followers of Jesus. What if we only had Mark and John? What if Matthew and Luke didn't exist? Or what if we hadn't found those Gospels yet? Or what if they didn't include miraculous birth stories? What if there were no Christmas story? Would you still be a Christian? Would you still commit yourself to following the Jesus way? Is our Christian tent large enough to include our many diverse understandings of the holy in our midst, to welcome in and heartily embrace all seeking to respond to the call of God in their lives? <clears throat> 